What's up, everybody? David Burns with you again, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Thank you for joining me for another beekeeping video. I appreciate it so much. Today, we're going to look at small hive beetles. Now, that's a tough thing to deal with, especially if you live in a climate that really supports the growth and rapid expansion of small hive beetles. And if you've ever kept bees in a more tropical area where it's warmer, let's say the southern part of the U.S., wow, it can really be bad, these small hive beetles. Even here in Illinois, small hive beetles are often a really big problem. It may be something that you might be thinking you'll never deal with, but it's likely that if you live in an area where they're at, uh, you're going to have to deal with it. And today I'm going to show you a trick and some tips to deal with these small hive beetles to stay on top of it before they ruin your entire colony, especially your honey super. Now, small hive beetles came into the U.S. not that long ago, 1998, 24 years ago. So we've been really trying to get a handle on them ever since they got here. But doggone it, they are a critter that's hard to get rid of. And everybody's trying, entomologists, people with PhDs, university studies have been done. There's a lot of uh, secret weapons that we've developed to kind of throw at these small high beetles, but there's only one that really kind of rings, th uh, rings true to me, and that's just to trap and kill the darn thing. By the way, I'm gonna be spotlighting a subscriber coming up, so pay attention. Could be you. If you haven't become a subscriber, well, then I can't give you a shout out and put your name on the screen. So be sure and subscribe. I appreciate it so much. Give me a thumbs up and click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. I'm working hard. And so if you don't know I made a new video, my work just flies out into the you know space and nobody watches it. So if you subscribe and click on the bell, you'll be able to watch my hard work. All right, well, let's talk about small high beetle today. Small high beetle came into the country, like I said, about 1998, and it began to really attack beehives. Those little critters are so hard to kill. Uh, they are about the size of a ladybug, if you know what a ladybug looks like. Uh, you can see them here in the video. They're dark, they're black, dark brown, and they fly a long ways after a weak colony. They will go into a weak colony, lay eggs. They lay eggs in crevices. They'll even lay eggs through the cap brood of worker brood. They'll actually just take over the hive, laying all those eggs. All those beetles first become larvae, and that larvae just worms its way through the comb, through the honey, and as they do, they slime it, they ruin it. It's, it's a disaster. It's terrible. Now, if you see a few of these small hive beetles, the best thing you can do is just take your hive tool out and smash them as soon as you can. The best technique I've learned is as soon as you open up your top cover, flip it over and start looking for a small hive beetle so you can kill them right away before they have a chance to lay eggs. Well, probably gonna be a lot of small hive beetle because they are could be a smaller one. So we've got a small hive beetle trap so let's take a look to see if there's any on any top cover small hive beetles. I don't see any. But also you want to look around on top frames. But it is really depressing when you start to do your hive inspection and you're pulling up frames, especially of honey, honey super frames, and you're seeing just tons of beetles, either larvae or adult beetles walking around in there. And as you can see, here's the small hive beetle trap. Let's see how well it performed. Look at the propolis right here. I always like to take my hive tool. There could be small hive beetles hiding underneath. So you want to kill any small hive beetle by smashing them like this before you take it out. Now, take your hive tool, loosen up the trap without cutting it and spilling oil in the hive. Be careful about that. Wow, look at that propolis. I'm getting a lot of propolis on my hive tool. If you fail to work uh, your colonies against small hive beetle, you might wind up with a lot of them. Now you can see in this uh, trap, it has done its job well. Oh, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So probably a good, oh, I don't know, 20 at the bottom. 
You can just see them floating there. So that's why these uh, beetle traps are really effective. Now there's a lot of things out on the market today. There's the uh, Swiffer pads that people use, like a dryer pad that they'll use in the hive to kind of hang up on the legs of the beetles and catch them and trap them. Uh, there's chemicals. There's some very toxic chemicals that people will use to kill small hive beetle both in the hive and outside the hive by spraying the ground around it. And I've done that before way back in the day when I had a lot of small hive beetles as a result of bringing them up from the south and uh, I had to deal with it and I finally got it under control, but it took me about a year to do it. And so it's really a challenge to control these small hive beetles. One of the best methods that I have found to do that is to use a trap. And I have one right here. It is a just known as a small hive beetle trap. And this trap will cause the beetles to fall down into this little container and get trapped in the oil and actually perish in the oil. So these are really good to put between frames like this in your hives. I usually put a couple in each box just to see if I can trap them. It works really good. But if you can stay ahead of the game, most of you are getting packages of bees. Most packages come from the south or the west. Uh, if, if you can get early packages, there's a chance there could be beetles in them. So you might as well start your uh, installation of your package with a trap in there just to catch any beetles that may have come in with that package. That's always a good thing. And remember, beetles can fly a long way and they fly into hives. They especially like to fly into weak colonies. Once they get into a weak colony, sometimes the bees work hard to put them in a propolis gel. Um, they'll actually, let me get it. The bees will actually force the beetles into a corner and they'll use propolis that they bring in from different plants and tree resins and makes a sticky substance. They'll actually trap the beetles in a gel, a propolis gel. And uh, unfortunately, the beetles have a way of tickling the antenna of the bee and the bees will feed them and uh, kind of slide some water and bread under the gel bars, I guess. They're not really getting rid of them. And as soon as you kind of move your frames around or open up the top, you break this propolis gel open and beetles just run everywhere. Once the beetles are in there, the adult beetles begin to lay eggs in crevices all around the hive. They'll even lay eggs in the caps of the brood and that larvae, when it starts to develop, will just run all through your brood, all through your honeycomb, and just make a mess of your entire colony. In fact, some hives that are really infested with these small hive beetles will actually abscond, fly complete, all the bees will leave completely away and leave an empty hive full of just beetle mess. So you wanna get in control of your beetles as early as you can. Always remember that small hive beetle really loves smaller colonies. They love mating nukes if you're raising queens. They love, when you buy a, a nuke, they love a nucleus. They love uh, packages that are small, don't have any comb in it. Uh, they love a small colony that you might be using uh, around your property, just starting out a new hive, it might be small. Or a weak colony, if it's starting to perish, something like that, uh, beetles can go into small colonies. So the answer to help control beetles is to always keep your colonies very strong, heavily populated, and fill her up with these traps. Now these traps need a little bit of oil in the bottom, not a lot, about a quarter of an inch tops, and that way these uh, small hive beetles are gonna drop down in through these holes running from the bees, hit that oil, essentially suffocate and die. And again, you've gotta control those early to keep them under control all year long. This is a great tip for you new beginners, and again, these beetles have just ran all through the U.S. and very few states really don't have a problem with it. The more dry, arid places, desert areas don't have as much problems as we see in places uh, where that larvae, when it uh, starts to develop, will jump out of the hive and into soil to pupate into ground around the hive. Now, some of you ask me questions all the time about, hey, can I control beetles by putting salt around my hive? That way when the larvae jumps out of the hive to pupate in the ground or gra hot gravel or something, it'd kill them. Well, yeah, that works, but here's the problem. If you have so many beetles in your colony because you're not trapping or controlling the adult beetles, 
and you're letting them develop larvae in your hive, then you've kind of you're working backwards on it. You're trying to control uh, be beetles that are breeding in your hive and jumping out to pupate. You want to kill the ones jumping out to pupate. You know, you want to kill the mama beetle before she lays the egg and the eggs become a larvae. Does that make sense? <laughs> Don't just think about the ground around it. Let's think about trapping the mother beetle first before she lays eggs before you start worrying about the ground around the hive. Now, I know a ton of you are gonna send me a lot of comments telling me that I didn't mention this way to control beetles and that chemical to control beetles and this new method and that new way. I've researched all of those. I stay really close with new developments and new research. Every day, I'm constantly reading new studies and new reports on everything to do with beekeeping. I want you to rest assured that I put in my due diligence on newly released scientific documents and, and I keep my ear to the ground of what people are doing all over the US to control everything to do with bees, but especially small hay beetle. And uh, the more I hear, the more it just kind of comes back to this is pretty darn effective. And yeah, these other ways are too. And I know you're wanting to correct me about, you, you should tell them this way, you should tell them that way, this new invention, that a new invention. Ah, boy, you know what? I just want to keep saying that whatever works for you, beekeeping does not mean that I have the final say-so. It doesn't mean that this is the best way. It's the best way for me right now, but it may not be the best way for me tomorrow. <laughs> but right now it is, so I'm talking about it. But whatever the best way it is for you, that's what you should do. You don't want to give up what is working successfully for you. But on the other hand, if you're a new beginner and you don't know, don't start following every single gullible idea that you hear because some of them may not work as well as ones that have been proven. Does that make sense? Let's look at this. Isn't this cool? This shows that the development of the, from the egg to the developing larvae to when it starts getting bigger and capped over and becomes a, a pupa, purple-eyed pupa, and just getting ready to emerge uh, from the cell, from egg to honeybee. I thought that's really cool. I got a bunch of these frames that I use when I teach different classes, but I just think that's really cool to look at. And uh, it's hard to believe that the beetle could actually, you know, start penetrating these cap uh, here, these caps of the brood, and actually start laying eggs in with that uh, that pupa. Now, some of you confuse small high beetle with mites. Varroa destructor mite is tiny, very hard to see with your eyes. Small hay beetle is more easy because it's larger, about five millimeters in size long, so you can see a little bit better. And you are a new beekeeper. It means that you need to take a class. If you're getting your bees soon and you don't know how to control varroa mites and you don't know how to control small hay beetles and you're not familiar with how to look at eggs and the different stages of larvae and all, you got to take a class. Here's a link here below to my website. On this website, I have a lot of classes, but please look at these classes online. I think they're going to help you feel a little more confident on how you need to get your bees started and off to a great start. And a shout out to Pam. And Pam says, 30s and 40s still here on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. March is always the month I lose my hives. I am hoping to get them through the roller coaster weather patterns. Thanks. I have a few weeks to go before feeding them liquid. Yeah, I know. It is a roller coaster. And you're right. March for many places, uh, mid to north part of the U.S., really is a big loss uh, in the month of March. Uh, you might think your bees are doing good right now, but they still have, you know, a few more weeks, fingers crossed, they could still perish any day, even though you may have seen them flying good on a nice warm day a few days ago. We might have a cold snap that will take them out in a week or two. I mean, here in Illinois, we get some big snows in March, so we're kind of not out of the woods yet. Fingers crossed that things will go well. So shout out to Pam in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Never know how to say that correctly, but uh, we appreciate you being a subscriber. Thanks a lot. Hey, I've got a new video that you really need to watch. This video is a really good video that will help you understand more about what to do if your queen gets into your honey super. 
So look at this video on how to take your queen and get her to stay in the brood nest area. I'll see you next time.